These past three episodes of Young Justice Outsiders has been crazy. What's up, YouTubers of the world? Make a Geek Mixer here to give you guys my review on the last three episodes that came out these past three weeks. I have been very behind on Young Justice, and I me don't mean review-wise, I mean watching them. I only had just like, what was it, Friday to finally watch all three of them at once because I've been very behind on them. But and now I'm here, ready to review all three, and ready to catch up uh, and give you guys my thoughts on what's been going on. Let's start off with episode 18, which, which is still continuing the trend of uh, the outsiders and their and what they're trying to do and showing they're here to help and they're trying to show people people with powers just want to help and it's off to an awesome start and one one person who's really getting the trend out there is Courtney Whitmore aka Stargirl voiced by Whitney Moore by the way a member of the DC Daily family and man I am glad for that I love her she is awesome and <laughs> let's just see her more of her as the as the series go on because she's been doing great and she's really been showing how much of a fan she is of the outsiders as they're trending worldwide top trend for that matter but what got him, them into that for this episode was that the outsiders went to cuba to rescue some meta human meta humans who were kidnapped and had their meta gene activated this time by clarion the a member of the light the magician kid and and after he activated one of them who actually has a later role in episode 20 because she has the because her powers with her make her become somewhat an atlantean or just have atlantean abilities but that aside eventually after the activation of all the powers he puts them all together and to form some sort of monsters that the outsiders has to face and luckily though they had backup in zatanna who is a member of the justice league and shouldn't have really been there but with her spell she made it show that only the the outsiders and clarion could know she's there and she was able to stop that monster and split up and split them up and save those kids and the outsiders were also given the credit of saving those kids as well of course of course, though, it doesn't sit well with some people in Cuba's military. One guy in particular just wanted to call authorities on them, but but even even still, there were some out there who were showing resistance, such as the kidnapped kids. They were showing that they are outsiders, too, because, for one, not all of those kids were from Cuba. Some of them were from other countries, didn't have anywhere to go, so they would be going to the, the MetaHuman Youth Center. But, dear, but that is what got the trend going. The kidnapped kids are get, being known worldwide as we are all outsiders. <laughs> And that trend, along with many others that relates to the outsiders, is just killing it right now. <laughs> but, but with with also that, we the guy from the Runaways back in season two, after what they did in Cuba, decided to join the team to put a symbol out there for the people at the Meta Human Youth Center. And also for a subplot in episode 18, we're learning that Halo, well, she's not catching a break. She first finds out Gabrielle took a bribe that indirectly caused the death of Brion and Tara's parents, and now she's dying, according to Dr. Jace. Her purple her purple aura it does heal her from fatal and minor injuries, but it seems to not do some heal the damage to the cells or whatnot. That's what I'm getting from it. And well, she just she's going in an even more distant spot than she already was at first that's in the fact that she's not talking with Brion anymore and she's getting into reckless danger and trouble such as when she hung out with Harper Rowe and they decided to drink alcohol and shoot guns for gun practice which made them get arrested but eventually Megan was Miss Martian was able to get Halo out of there but uh, she didn't reveal why she was arrested in the first place while Harper she had to wait for her father and real quick I'm going to go ahead and get into that because that was revealed in this week's episode, this past week's episode, episode 20, that her father is an alcoholic and has gone and with the, and has a gun and he's abusive to her. 
to to Harper Rowe and her brother, which McGann found out, and she was finally able to get them to a safe house. So that's good there. But for Halo, her troubles just kept getting more and more complicated. For it, for moving into episode uh, 19 now. So in this episode, while she was helping out on a mission, she got reckless and and like nearly got herself beheaded but after the after the whole mission and stuff she finally opened up to Brion and Tara about what Gabrielle Dow did and yeah they didn't take the news very well they took it a lot a lot bet a lot better than i was hoping for cuz i didn't know how they would react i thought they would react bad to it but at least they didn't react too bad to it it only reacted to the fact that Brion asked how long she knew and since she knew long enough after that, he just silently walked away while Tara had an anxiety attack. But, <laughs> but let's hope that somehow that'll work through later on. And then moving into episode 20 with Halo's problems, she decided to go to run away from the team for a while to go visit Gabrielle Dow's family to give them the closure that they need. And knowing what happened to Gabrielle, Gabrielle and Halo taking over her body, and yeah. There were only those two, I guess. The the guy was her uncle, while the woman was Gabrielle's mother. And while and while the uncle didn't like how Halo took over Gabrielle Dow's body and he even considered her a demon, the mother took it with better grace. But that's because she's lost so much as it is. She's got a lot of anger to spare, and she was grateful to Halo for at least giving her the closer that she needs. As was I. <laughs> and speak and also. And also, moving into also in episode 18, Luthor, with knowing how big the outsiders are becoming thanks to that trend, that them being trended to number one and all that, he decided to find a way to discredit them. So he set up a stage and attack by Cassandra, by Cassandra Savage and Lady Shiva, and Lady Shiva. So to discredit the outsiders to and to put it as that the outsiders endanger kids and getting and and getting hurt or nearly losing their lives and he also did it to make it show that all these things he's put on the justice league to where they can't really help out with these crimes and things everywhere it to show that the system works because he got the military person for that country to help them out and he, he staged it to where they would attack the ambassadors of atlantis and themiscara that being troya and garth who by the way troya we learned in this universe is wonder woman's sister which is cool and and if y'all know her comic book history, y'all know that she was really supposed to be a clone, a weapon to take on Wonder Woman, and more to it than that. It's a little complicated, but I'm not going into it. I just wanted to throw that out there. But but either way, the his plan did sort of work because that, that runaway kid with the teleporting powers, Kid Flash and Cassandra, and Wonder Girl's par and Wonder Girl's parents and guardians, they all confronted the three of them to try to tell them, we don't want you to do this. It can endanger your lives because you're out there in the public now. But they were able to convince their 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 parents and guardians to trust in them and to show that they can make it through this. It actually got so much to the point that J Jay Garrett, who was the guardian of Bart Allen, Kid Flash, started started a trend along with Flash saying, We are all outsiders. So that that so that plan sort of backfired on Luthor afterwards, and it really backfired when we found out that the outsiders had to rescue a kid from Professor Ivo, which wasn't really a real threat. It was more of a setup by Batman and his crew, who set it up to make Luthor look bad, and that's what led into Gordon Godfrey, a member of Apocalypse, on his show with Lex Luthor, and and expo well not exposing him but making him look bad and saying how all he's been trying to do with discredit the outsiders is backfiring on him and that really pissed Luthor off that it looks like he's really going to retaliate big on this now especially since he may know that since Batman confirmed that he'll know it was a setup but he Batman pretty much used what Luthor used in the early part of this episode saying knowing and improving are two different things but even still, though, Wonder Woman doesn't like what Batman did. And I gotta agree with her on this one. This one's kind of going overboard because he not only manipulated Luthor, which was good, the bad part is he manipulated the outsiders, too. Deceiving the outsiders, setting up something fake to make them look like they were the heroes. <laughs> and if the outsiders 
ever find out about this. It's not going to be pretty, and it's going to cause a rift between the mentors and them. But I will, but I will say this: this is Batman we're talking about. He's willing to go the extra mile and carry that burden of people hating on him and stuff. Mostly because he's not good with socializing and stuff, and he lets people believe what they want. Because you know him and his war on crime. He goes into. Uh, uh, cross some of them gray area parts to do what he needs to do but but we'll see how it all folds out later on going forward and then we go on into episode episode 20 where it finally gives us a look into cyborg so he was purged he was cleansed by halo back then in part one of the season of the season and it looks like it wouldn't take control over him. And while it doesn't take control over, it's still the father box inside him still affects him because it started to get to the point where the infection was growing and growing. And the only way to save him was by getting help from Metron, the Observer, and his Mobius chair, which Superboy, Forager, and Black Lightning went into space to find him, where they found him at the Source Wall, and they ran into Superman, where Superboy had a chance to ask him to be his best man but not let him know he's engaged. Bummer on that end. And yeah, they were able to get Metron to come to Cyborg, but not to rescue him. He was just going to observe and see what happens. But since they only needed the Mobius chair, luckily Black Lightning and Superboy were able to get Mobius off that chair. I, I, yeah, no, Metron off that chair. Yeah, I... Metron off that chair and get the get Cyborg into the Mobius chair where they were able, where the father box soul finally left his body and now it looks like Cyborg is definitely completely free of the father box and it looks like maybe this time he'll finally be able to start moving on with his life. Now I'm still probably going to work on wanting to get that get the cybernetics off of him but will now eventually start to grow into his world as the hero cyborg and work with the outsiders more it look at least that's what it's looking like and i'm hoping for that i really am and ask for like that meta human girl i talked about the one that had atlantean powers that that relate to Atlantean powers. She had a role in this one too, where Aqualad Cal or now going by Aquaman as Calderon. He took he took her to Olymp to Atlantis in the country of Poseidon, where she was now going to be staying with with Calderon's family, his mother and his adoptive father, so she can live life out there. And while there, it was here we learned of Aquaman, the former Aquaman, and saying how he always wanted Calderon to take his spot as Aquaman, especially since the roles as King of Atlantis is already crazy enough as it is, and he's proud of what Aquaman's been doing. Still not, and Aquaman doesn't know of the deception thing going on, and Aqualad has been put... I'm sorry I keep calling him Aqualad, I'm just used to calling him that, but I'll just probably try to call him Calderon, but either way, he's so in his own uneasiness about this whole thing, he's going along with Batman's plan and stuff, but luckily, thanks to that girl who, by the way, she hasn't given us a name, so I can't really say much about say anything except that she says that he's a good person even though he's doing a bad thing he feels bad about it that's what makes him a good person which is good and all and speaking of which and this is where actually in this episode we find out that i think that aqualad is actually bisexual because we see he's in a relationship with aquaman's new right hand who looks like garth but isn't garth so i wonder who this guy is but the way i say bisexual is because he had feelings for a girl named tula who was aqua girl back in season one and now that see he's in a relationship with a guy makes you think he's bisexual or maybe he is gay and just realized it over the time skip who knows because in the dc rebirth comics when he was introduced to the teen titans he was already shown to be gay so maybe that's it or maybe they just put the the part of him in there liking guys just to make it bisexual either way it's pretty interesting and who knows we might see more to come with it later on down the line but definitely guys this has been an interesting thing oh one more thing i forgot to mention black lightning noticed movie is calling talking about granny goodness and asked him is granny goodness and gretchen good one of the same mobius says yes and no but this is no doubt probably going to finally get them to the clue that she is a member of a Apocalypse and hopefully stop her and get her off the planet and hopefully they can do that to go Gordon Godfrey soon here because yeah they don't know they got two apocalyptians and their earth so let's hope they find out soon enough but until then guys this has been an 
amazing three episodes and let's see how we go as we get closer to the end so we can move into titans and all but it's been fun and i can't wait to see what else is coming next but until then if you guys are enjoying my videos all you gotta do is click that like button subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon to be notified when i make more videos until then mega geek mixer signing out bye